In our last video, we saw how a couple had funded their whole life insurance policies and made up for lost time. Specifically, they took policies out and their goal was to max fund the policies year in and year out. And they did exactly that in the first year. However, when the second year came, they did not max fund the policies. They only paid the minimum premium. But then in year three, they paid the maximum they could for year three. But in addition to that, they paid the maximum they could have paid in year two. So they made a very large payment in policy year three to get them back to where they would have been as if they were max funding the policy each year. And that's an interesting concept to be aware of. If the policy is designed properly, you can do that. But if you've got the ability to make up for lost time, you can really continue to grow your policy nicely because all of those additional payments go where? Into your PUA rider, which is how we maximize the cash value of a policy. So that was step one, which we always start with this, which is maximizing the cash value of a whole life insurance policy. But then step two is helping one use the policy. If we look at the combined funding of the couple, what do we have? $110,000, but that's the maximum dollar amount. So they've got the ability to pay up to $110,000 per year. And if we look at the combined minimum commitments, we're a little over $12,000 per year, which means what they are billed for each year is about $12,000. And then they can add additional funds up to a total of 110 per year. Everything above that 12 is being dumped into their PUA rider. But when we talk about step two, using the money. So this couple is experienced in, and very successful with real estate. They know a lot more about it than I do. Um, and admit, admittedly, I am not a real estate expert by any means. I've got some experience, but most clients that we work with that are involved in real estate, whether it's on a full-time or, or part-time basis, typically have a lot more experience than me and they're very, very good at it where they leverage us or where we help when it comes to real estate investing is not coaching at all on the actual real estate deals, but specifically how we can use the life insurance policy. So in a case like this, we might look at three different scenarios, call it A, B, and C. And those will look like this. What does it look like if I decide to borrow against the policy and pay interest only? What does it look like if I decide to borrow against the policy and don't make any payments? Maybe life happens and I can't pay anything or I just wanna see what it looks like if I take a loan and never pay it back, what is the impact on the policy? And in a case like that, what I like to look at is what are the current assumptions based on the company's present dividend interest rate and then also a conservative assumption and even the guarantees in many cases. But that could be option B. And then option C, what does it look like if we take a loan and repay the loan in full? And that can be in a short period of time, a long period of time. Some like to see paying interest only for several years, perhaps during the first five to 10 years where they are aggressively funding the policy. And then after they funded the policy, what they'll do is redirect money they were paying toward premium, toward loan payments, and look at different options. Basically, what we want to make sure of is that we're making the best possible decisions with the whole life insurance product and maximizing the cash value, the IRR, making sure we're not paying an excessive amount in loan interest relative to what the policy is growing by. Important things to be aware of. That's, that's our specialty. So what we're going to look at in this video is what we just talked about. We're going to look at loan scenarios that demonstrate paying interest only and then also repaying the loan. What we're going to look at are the combined values of these two policies, $110,000 per year. The funding, however, remember the couple has already paid into the policy for the first three years. That's money they've actually deposited. We've got the actual cash value figures, the actual death benefit figures. So what they have right now is their actual cash value. So what will be fun about this is we've got a real policy and we can illustrate A, what does it look like if I borrow against the cash value based on what I actually have today? And then B, if I continue to fund it at the maximum level or if I tweak the funding, how much could I potentially have access to? And let's look at models to see exactly what the policy is growing by compared to what I'm paying in loan interest to see if this strategy truly makes sense for me 
When I say me, I'm talking about the policyholder as if I'm you. So let's have some fun with this. We'll begin with this guy, which is where we left off in the last video, which is our combined values. And we did reference the Inforce illustrations, which our last video does provide <clears throat> a breakdown on those. But we've got the husband, started the policy at age 50. This was back in 2020. You've got the wife, also started at age 50 back in 2020. What we've got here, base premium and term rider. Let's make that column a little bit bigger actually. Here we go. Much better. Now we can see everything there. So we've got the base premium and term rider. That's the minimum commitment for the husband, 3,600 per year. And we see that it, that was paid for the first three years. The same is true for the wife, 87.50 per year. Then the additional PUA payments, what they had actually paid into the policies. You see that large catch-up payment in year three for both of them. And then what's highlighted in yellow represents the break-even point. And we did add uh, a quick side item in the last video that if they would have max funded in years one and two, that break-even point would likely be between years three and four because they just max funded in year three and paid nothing extra in year two. That's why the break-even is delayed. They're very close in year four, but we'll cash positive in year five in this example. But on the far right, what we've got are the combined values, which just takes both values together, years one through three, again, what actually happened, and then what things look like moving forward, assuming they fund $110,000 per year. They might not do that. So when we are working with someone and looking at different scenarios, this would be a question I would ask. And if someone says, hey, I don't know if I can fund the maximum or it might not be likely, what I would do is provide a model with the maximum and then also a model with the minimum or perhaps the 50% funding assumption, which would be a middle of the road number, which again, we looked at in our last video. But this scenario, we'll look at max funding it. So it looks good over time, combined cash values, and really how a lot of people view this, they say, okay, here's the money I've got in cash value. I view it similar to a personal line of credit that I can access in order to take advantage of opportunities, in this case, real estate, as the years pass. So let's assume we've got a real estate deal. How can I use these policies? So here we've got our loan workbook, which does not demonstrate an actual policy loan. What we're looking at Actual loans will will illustrate that and then provide the illustration on that. This is meant to be just a quick sample workbook to give us an idea of what the policy might grow by compared to how much I might pay in loan interest. It, it was really created to get a sense of what a cash value collateral loan would look like, but we can use it just to get a quick sense of, hey, what's how much am I gonna pay in interest? Like, what will this look like? So what we've got on the left, are the combined values. We see year three, or years one through three, what actually happened, and then another three years of 110, getting close to $700,000 total paid into the policy. This column, yearly cash value growth. What is my cash value growing by on an annual basis? Worst year is the first year. They paid a total of $108,000 into the policy. Their net cash value, was $95,521, which no matter how you slice it, comes out to a $13,000 hit, primarily satisfying the cost of the insurance, both the base premium and the term rider. Total gain on cash value. Well, in the first year, it's going to be identical to that cash value growth, negative $13,000. Next year, they paid just the minimum. There we go. There's my actual growth, meaning I paid in $12,350, I got that back, plus another $38,49. And that, this again, is with both policies combined. The next year, we make a large catch-up payment. We explained why we're negative in a case like this, why we have a negative impact on cash value with a large PUA deposit. It has to do with PUA fees. And when we make a very large PUA payment, especially in the early years, the fee on that large deposit can exceed what the policy is growing by, which happened in this case. These are real numbers, which is why I see negative growth there. However, that does begin to compound for me, and that's why I see the following year, 
the growth really begins to pick up the pace, meaning they pay a total of $110,000, they get that one ten back, plus another $10,205. We're still negative here when we look at the gain on cash value, and the reason why, when we look at this, is by year four, if this is you, how much have you paid into the policy? Total payments, I should say policies, $457,600. What is your total cash value with both policies combined? $453,821. Do you have more or less money than what you paid into the policy? You've got less, and the exact dollar amount is right here, about 3,800 bucks. The next year, why we see that we're no longer in the red, our total payments, 567, cash value, 579, which is $11,606 more than our total payments. Same thing here with the yearly cash value growth. This represents the net dollar amount the policy is growing by each year. So we can see what actually happened in the first three years. Year four is based on the in-force illustration, but as time passes, we want to measure the actual performance. So we spent a lot of time breaking down the yearly cash value growth and the total gain. That's very important to do, especially when we're looking at using the policy, because what so many people want to see is this. When I use my policy, what's the growth compared to the interest paid? Because if I look at the rate, we could plug the internal rate of return into this. It's not 5.66%, which is the fixed loan interest rate on their policy. So when I look at it in dollars, am I going to pay more in loan interest than what I'm receiving in interest from the insurance company, specifically dividends and the guaranteed rate? So let's take a look. Let's assume in year three, where they've got $300,000 in change in cash value, they take a loan. So to the right, maximum loan, 95% of cash value. So typically the maximum loan you can take against a policy is right around 95%. Sometimes a little bit higher, sometimes a little bit lower. We'll make it 95% in this example. Let's assume they take $200,000. Let's make it 250, quarter million. So we take a loan of 250. We see that our available equity drops. So if I wanted to borrow more money, well, the maximum loan I can now take is just about $67,000 because I've got 250 dollars outstanding already. Loan interest payments, $14,150. So let's take a look at this. Year three, I want to look at how much I'm paying in loan interest compared to what my growth is. Now, they're about to enter policy year four. Policy year three will end in a couple of weeks for them. So what I would actually do here is put this 250 in the next year. There we go. So now we can see, what am I paying in loan interest under annual interest payment compared to the yearly cash value growth? $10,205, the interest paid $14,150. So I've paid a bit more in loan interest than what the policy has produced in growth that year. If I look at the next year, Assuming I don't pay any of the principal down and I do not take any additional loans, what happens? Well, interest payment again, $14,150. This does assume a fixed loan interest rate. And the yearly cash value growth, $15,385. Now, of course, if we take additional loans, because we can take more here, that will change the total interest I'm going to pay each year. But what I can do is review it and see on a yearly basis when I'm ahead versus when I'm behind. So let's assume they do something like this. They take two loans of 250 and then $200,000. So what we'll do next then is assume they repay it, but why don't we do this actually? So because they're aggressively funding the policy through year six, let's assume interest only payments are made through year six. There we go. And then year seven, we'll begin to attack the loan principal. Let's take a look. So we can attack it really at any pace that we want, but let's pay it back at, we've got 450 outstanding. They'll be in their mid fifties. Let's pay it back at 36,000 per year. 
which is based on $3,000 per month toward the principal. Something very important here is to consider the fact that we're also paying the interest out of pocket. And we'll pay it off the following year. So we're in a combined loan repayment plus annual interest in this particular case. So what you could do, if you want to see your total out of pocket, we can do this for you too, is just combine these. And you know, to be fair, there's the total out of pocket each year, factoring in the loan interest. And we could design it where we're just paying a net of 36 k per year. All depends on how you want to address it. So in this case, 36 k per year, which is 3000 per month toward the principal. And I'll just say this really quick, how they've used the policies thus far with respect to loans and then repayments has not been like this. They've been, when they've had loans outstanding, they've quickly paid them back and then also added additional funds into PUAs. So you can attack it however you'd like. From a illustrative standpoint, what's beneficial to see is the impact here if I slowly repay it. Because if we pay it back faster, what's going to happen? You're going to pay less loan interest, which will work out to your favor. But in this case, we'll pay it back slower. Here we go. So as we're paying it back, there's your principal balance going down. But each year, you're still paying loan interest. So just like we did before, we want to compare what the policy is growing by annually compared to what we're paying in loan interest. And then here's a column I really like to look at. What's the total amount I've paid in loan interest? Right? You ever take a mortgage out and you have a low loan interest rate, but then you see that the total interest paid over that 30-year mortgage is several hundred thousand dollars, and you're like, how does this work? Oh, they charge me heaviest for the interest up front? Break that down for me. Well, if I can just see exactly what I'm paying in loan interest, that sometimes makes it easier. And then also, I can see, all right, so you tell me if I apply money toward the principal faster, I'll pay less in interest? Yes, that's the case. Okay, I'm gonna try to do that. Some people do that at least. But here I can see total interest paid compared to the total gains on the policy. Now, to be fair here, you've paid 211, call it $212,000 in loan interest and you had borrowed a total of $450,000. Whereas this gain of 461, at this point in time, well actually, overall, is based on your total payments of almost $680,000 in the cash value comp compounding over time. Remember, a benefit to a cash value life insurance policy is if I loan against it or not, what happens? I continue to receive dividends and interest. Now again, this illustration here does not model direct policy loans. We want to look at an actual life insurance illustration with loans. We've got other videos that do that. But in a case like this, if I have a collateral loan, which is a line of credit with a bank where I've assigned my cash value as collateral to them, it'll be very, very similar. Because I've got the loan outstanding, interest goes to the bank, the cash value of my policy is not even touched with a cash value collateral loan. Like it's all still there, still there 100% compounding as time passes. Just tracking the actual performance here is very, very important because the dividend is going to change and I want to see what reality brings compared to what is illustrated. But this step is meant to demonstrate exactly what we'll do for individuals when looking to use the policy. And some people have a good sense. Uh, we've worked with a number of people who will spreadsheet this on their own. Some have shared their spreadsheets with me and it's pretty cool. Um, but then, then again, some people like these workbooks where they can see, okay, here's what it'll look like. Some only want to see exactly what a policy might look like if I take direct policy loans, meaning if I borrow directly against the life insurance policy, What's going to happen? What if I pay interest only for a period of time? What if I don't pay it back at all? That's the kind of stuff I want to see. And again, we do have other videos that go over that. But I hope this video helped. I hope it uh, helped provide an overview as far as what we do, particularly when it comes to helping you use the policy, providing numbers so you can make an informed decision. I like this stuff a lot. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more. If you have any questions, please let us know below. And as always, I hope this helps. Thanks so much. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, 
feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.